welcome to today's video. We're going to compare the Sage R8 to the Sonic, to the Trout LL from Sage, the Sage Igniter, the Sage Dart, and their entry level rod, the Sage Foundation. It's Joe from Red's Fly Shop here. I've been wanting to do this video for some time. Uh, is Sage has an incredible lineup of trout rods, but there's a lot of them. And these are big purchases. And so when you're going to purchase a rod, depending on your destination, your style, your needs, your budget, there's a lot of different choices out there. We want to help make sure that you make the right choice. Uh, we have an incredible inventory of Sage rods, and there's going to be a link in the video description to each one of these models. So in addition to just subscribing to our channel, liking the video, throw comments in there, I try to get to those every couple of days, we'd love you to purchase your Sage rod from us, especially when it comes to setting up reels, lines, and etc. So what I'm gonna do is I have fished all these different rods fairly extensively, and I'm just gonna give you a general talk through on where I think that rod fits really well, and we're gonna stick essentially in the trout weight. Some of these rods uh, offer heavier weights um, in the seven, eight, nine, 10, uh, even 11 and 12 weight range, but we're gonna really focus our talk on the rods that are six weight on down as they apply to the trout fishermen. So I'm gonna start at, at this end and just kind of work down. They're not really in a particular order, uh, but we'll go through some of the, the details of the rod Regarding a lot of the real finer technologies on the rod, if you're curious about nano resins and graphite and all that stuff, just go to the manufacturer's website. If you really want to read about that, I'm going to give you real down to earth, useful information that will impact your experience and your fishing. So we're going to start with the Sage uh, R8 and I've done a few other independent reviews on these rods. But uh, so if you, if you really want to see the super fine details, just click the link in the video description. You can see uh, better macros. But the R8 uh, is their newest rod. Uh, it's considered what they call Revolution 8 technology. Uh, it just came out in 2022 out of this lineup. It's their newest rod. It's kind of this, what, what they call a silver spruce color. Um, it's a nicely finished blank. It's not anything real flashy but they do have some really nice cutouts, kind of the angular stuff on the reel seat uh, is really, really nice. Uh, it is an up-locking reel seat. And um, I just noticed for the first time, there's only one ring on this, but I have this rod and I haven't noticed that to come loose uh, at all. In fact, I think all the Sage rods that I'm looking at here all just have a single locking ring, but um, they have some type of kind of like washer mechanism that must help itself lock on there which is kind of cool. Um, so there's just, yeah, just one ring on there. Um, tight cork, short grip, ultra light. Supposedly this is Sage's lightest five weight ever made. Now where the R8 really shines, it's incredibly versatile. So I have the five weight version of this. I've fished it extensively now with nymphs, dries, streamers, hopper dropper style setups, and it performs incredibly well in a huge variety of situations. Um, if you're into big distance casting and you want to throw 120 feet, the R8 probably wouldn't be my choice. Will it reach out there and touch any reasonable target that you have the ability to cast in? Absolutely. Uh, the R8 is really fun to dry or to false cast. Um, it sets down dry flies very delicately, but you can really get into the butt of this rod um, with ease. And that's where I think like intermediate level casters really excel with this because they get an opportunity to use a little bit more rod with the R8. Uh, that Revolution 8 technology allowed them to keep the butt a little bit thinner and more flexible, but still maintain a lot of the strength. So it's a very fun rod to cast, very versatile. Uh, it comes with, you know, I think everything here except the approach comes with a really nice aluminum tube. It's really nicely packaged, really nicely finished. I will try to tie these rod socks up nice and neat and pretty like they did from the factory when I put these ones uh, away and back in the warehouse. So the R8, incredibly versatile. If an angler is looking for a premium rod that is kind of that one rod quiver, 
type type Rob, the R8 would be a really, really good choice in anything from that three to six weight range. Uh, the R8, super well-rounded rod. Um, moving on, and it's the most expensive rod in the lineup too at over a thousand bucks. So it is definitely a big purchase. But if you do buy it uh, at Reds and you add a fly line to your cart, the fly line will ring up at no cost. So uh, we throw in a, a free fly line of your choice with that uh, for shopping with us. The next one down is one I really like. So this is Sage's Kinetic Technology. And this is called the Sage Sonic. Uh, the Kinetic Technology was a material and construction process that really made the Sage One famous, which was kind of a somewhat of a groundbreaking rod for lightness and performance at the time. And uh, a lot of people like to say the Sonic is just the Sage One with a slightly different color. I'm not sure if that's true or not. I think the Sonic uh, really fits in well for the, the Western angler that really, or the Eastern angler that may have to reach out and touch some stuff. It's a very fast action rod. Um, and fast action doesn't always mean more power, but it typically translates into tighter loops and a little bit more distance with less false cast. So think going to Montana a couple of times a year, bouncing downstream in a drift boat, really firing big salmon flies or streamers or nymphs really quickly in a fast tempo with, without a lot of false casting from the boat, the Sonic really fits in nicely. Uh, in comparing the Sonic to the other rods um, here, the Sonic is just, it's much more basic on the finish. Um, it's not a bad looking rod, but they definitely cut a little out on like the real seat and the components and such here. Um, this is, you know, components and things you know, if, if you're buying a rod for a lifetime, I personally do care about the components. I think they look nice, so there's nothing wrong with having a pretty rod. But by the time you, you take one of these Sonics, you throw a reel on it, you throw a line on it, whatnot, it, the price adds up by the time you put it all together. So um, if buying a Sonic rather than like the Igniter, which we'll review next, which has a similar action, maybe the Sonic allows you to buy a little bit better reel or just get into the rod. These are expensive. Um, I think they're coming in, I think it's 630 bucks. I try not to do too much on recollection based on price, but I've used the Sonic a lot. I really like it. Um, if I lived out West, I was gonna use the same rod for uh, streamers and nymphs, and then maybe some hopper fishing where I really needed to, to quick fire stuff. I think the Sonic would, would fit really well. And then in windy situations where we need to place you know, some caddis or some mayflies very accurately, and I'm thinking like maybe I'm out on the Missouri River throwing pale morning duns, uh, a nine foot three weight, a nine foot four weight Sonic uh, would be a really good choice. The nine foot four weight Sonic is absolutely incredible rod. Um, I mean, that thing for a four weight just absolutely throws laser beam style loops. So it, it's a more of an open water, windy Western uh, style rod and definitely be thinking about the Sonic if you're fishing a lot of the weighted flies. The next one on the list, I did a pretty extensive review uh, a few years ago of it, and that's the Sage Trout LL. And out of all the rods on the table here, man, this is the prettiest one. Um, it's got just this beautiful, I'm sure they have a name for it, but just this beautiful kind of a morel mushroom brown. Uh, color to it with beautiful gold accents uh, on all of the ferrules. So you can look at the photos of that, but just take my word for it, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, a little bit more refined, um, you know, real seat and things. Um, just very, very clean looking rod, beautiful wood real seat. Um, and again, I don't know the name, of it. I should, should know the official name of that grip, but Again, it's got that very short grip. We're not really moving our hand up and down this, not like a Euro rod or a heavier duty rod where we might need to slide and reposition our hand for power casting. Um, you're gonna have your hand pretty much right at the top of that cork the entire time. Uh, everything on the trout models, um, these all come with hook keeps position right there uh, in front of, the, in front of the, the grip right there. In the LL, uh, with the LL, dry fly fishing should be like, 80% of what you're doing with the LL. Light nymph rigs, no problem. Maybe the occasional little bugger, no problem at all. Am I gonna take this thing out and abuse it with a three quarter inch thing of a bobber and a stonefly nymph and a, a tungsten dropper? Absolutely not. Um, that rod is not really made to do that. This rod is made to pick up and throw 
two, three, four false casts, set down a very precise, very delicate presentation to trout that are responsive to dry flies. Um, in false casting, I, I need to do a whole video series on false casting because I think it's one of the most underutilized tools in the fly fisherman's quiver. Um, at some point, some guide, some outfitter, right in the middle of Montana somewhere said, quit false casting. And all of a sudden people told their friends, quit false casting, don't false cast, pick it up, lay it down, fly should be in the water. False casting builds line speed, accuracy. And for me personally, I would rather have one perfect shot on a trout uh, than a highly, repeti a highly repetitive series of mediocre drifts with less accuracy. So I'm gonna take one, two, three E false cast um, and drop that thing down. But the Trout LL is really like kind of this buttery smooth, deeper bending, you know, dry fly rod. Don't be afraid on the four and five weights to throw dry droppers, it's not a problem. Uh, but once you get down to the three weight, I'm probably not really thinking hopper dropper much with that, unless it was like, I was kind of in a pinch. Uh, so that's the Trout LL. All these have really nice um, aluminum caps, aluminum tubes. I mean, these are like kind of an heirloom type investment. Um, when we sell rods and, and I do a review or something, I don't expect you to go out and replace a similar rod with this one because it's the next latest and greatest thing. But if you're in the market to like buy one really nice thing that you're gonna love for all time, I mean, these saved rods are just so nicely finished. Um, they're, they're all really great lifetime purchases. So moving down the line here, um, I think, I said the Trout LL was the prettiest rod in the bunch. The Igniter has the coolest looking uh, real seat finish. And uh, I really like the, the look of the Igniter. It is a fast action, very powerful rod. Uh, the Igniter is extremely popular in those heavier weights. We sell a lot of eight, nine, 10 Igniters. And uh, in the trout weights, it's more of a niche thing. If you are fishing kind of like the Sonic um, in open environments, and you could be thinking South America would be a really good example. It is horrifically windy in Patagonia and you need to place a beetle pattern at 50 feet to a cruising fish and you need to get it there, uh, the igniter would do that. If you're bouncing down a stream, you're down, bouncing down the big hole river and I've got to fire a girdle bug at a moment's notice right up under a cut bank with some wind, the igniter would be the rod for the job. Kinetic HD technology, um, unbelievably straight casting. This is the same essentially materials and construction process the, the legendary Sage X was built from, this has a faster action taper to it. So um, the igniter really will reach out there and fire away. If I was in a distance casting competition at 80 feet for accuracy, the igniter would probably get the nod in that trout range. Um, it holds loops very, very tight, very, very fast action, very, very straight. Not the funnest rod to false cast at 25 feet with an elk hair cast. So if that is on the menu for you, I'm going to recommend a different rod for that situation, but tungsten headed buggers, double nymph rigs, firing them into the wind. The igniter is definitely uh, the right tool for the job. It comes with a black rod tube, black sock, uh, and is really nicely finished. It's kind of this maroon uh, look to it. And, I'll, I will go through at the end of the video, so you can skip ahead if you want, and I will get a macro of all the different rod colors and stuff at the very end, so you can see all the real seats and stuff that I'm talking about. Now, also in the trout range um, is gonna be the Sage Dart. So this is the little itty bitty guy right here. And the Sage Dart comes in much lighter weights and much shorter lengths. It's really uh, creek built, and the blank, this is a two weight. The blank itself is just unbelievably thin and flexible. So it's really fun to cast because I can lay that cast in there and I can feel that whole rod bend and rebound. And I really feel connected to my cast. I can feel at any instant that I lose tension or lose connectivity with my, my fly or my cast, I can feel it in this rod. So, and then I can apply pressure or decrease pressure during the cast really to recover and make a great presentation. I really do like the deep flexibility of the dart. It definitely is kind of a niche rod. Um, you're really looking at tight quarters casting and you're looking at uh, 
the, the thing that this rod does well is it, it is named dart, but it really does fire a fly. It loads up nice and smooth and soft. Like I can load it nice and deep, but when this thing rebounds, it rebounds with some oomph. So if you're a serious Creek fisherman, you want accuracy and you're going to be punching little flies up under the canopy for brook trout or trout that are laying up under brush and canopies and things. The dart is a really, really good choice versus say, the alternative might be a, an extremely soft action rod that doesn't rebound quickly like a fiberglass rod. Fiberglass rods are super fun, but they're not even half of the performance of a rod like the Sage Dart. So Sirius Creek Fisherman, loads easy, quick rebound. One thing to pay attention to is when you buy the darts, some of them are actually going to be three pieces. So I want you to just make sure that you know that you're not going to be getting a, a rod that folds down into two pieces nice and even. But it's seven foot six inches this three piece really isn't that long but i want you to to consider that those are three piece rods um the real seating components look a lot like the uh the trout ll um, it is really pretty nicely finished kind of an olive uh type finish with really beautiful uh gold wraps and in case you're wondering i'm gonna do fly lines uh at the very end recommended fly lines the last one in the group is going to be uh the sage foundation and uh, the foundation is just the entry level trout rod from Sage. Uh, it's a wonderful casting rod, um, good graphite, graphite 3E at one time, that was their top of the line, absolute top of the line graphite. Uh, it's a very, very good casting rod, extremely plain finish. You know, just a matte primer black, primer black, you know, forgive me for using that term, but it's what it is. It's primer black, primer black, real seed. Um, the cork isn't appear to be nearly as dense. It looks a little bit grainier, although I can't see any pits or anything in it right now. But the foundation's a great casting rod. It's a U.S. built rod made right here in the U.S. in Washington State, where I'm from, actually. And the foundation is a really great choice. Um, easy load, easy flex. It's really built for that angler that wants to get some really good biofeedback in the cast and feel what the rod is doing so that they can progress. If you told me today that I had to fish a sage foundation for trout the rest of my life, I would be like, okay, that's fine. I can, I can live with that. I'm not going to cut my arm off or anything like that. Uh -huh. It's a very nice casting rod. They really did cut a lot out of the aesthetics on this one, in my opinion. And then um, I really dislike Cordura like real cases, rod tube cases, because uh, in my line of work, these get wet, they get nasty, they're not watertight, um, but it comes with just a really basic, you know, zippered shut Cordura tube, no sock uh, or anything like that with the foundation. So that's the run through on the rods um, as far as an overview. And then I'm just going to ramble through some line recommendations really quickly. Uh, the Sage R8 for just general purpose trout fishing, I'm going to choose a Rio Gold Elite on that. Uh, that seems to be a good match amongst most of the weights. Uh, on the Sage Sonic, I'm choosing like a Rio Perception or a Scientific Angler's uh, Infinity fly line for the Sonic. I like to have just a little bit more there, unless I'm casting extremely far, then a Rio Gold would be great. But Infinity or a Perception on the Sonic, on the Trout LL. I'm looking at the Rio Gold, uh, maybe the Rio Technical Trout. If I'm dry fly fishing at some distance and in the nine foot models, the Technical Trout um, is a really great choice there. And uh, on the Igniter, most anglers with the Igniter are gonna appreciate having like a Rio Grand or a Scientific Anglers MPX. That's just a loads a little bit easier. It's gonna be a little bit better for reasonable fishing distances. You're still gonna get that nice quick bounce, that quick rebound, but it's gonna be a little bit more fun to load up. Uh, if, you're, if you're a highly advanced caster, you know, start to be thinking, and, you, and you're gonna be fishing dry flies at some great distance, the Rio Gold Elite would be a good choice for that. If you're out there at distance, maybe you're in Patagonia and you are throwing a long ways, uh, there's some lighter tapers that work good, but uh, if you're buying the igniter, chances are you have enough experience that you probably have some lines that you favor uh, already, but probably looking at the Rio Grand uh, on that one. With the Sage Dart, the Rio Creek line is a really great choice. It's a got, you know, with the Creek line, or the, the Dart rod rather, 
with that with that rod, your targets are going to be close, and it's imperative that your fly line has a little bit shorter head on it so that you can you can cast at 10, 15 feet. That's a very reasonable cast, and that dart will throw darts at 10 or 15 feet if you have the right line. But if you take a line that has a long taper that's designed to be best cast at 30 and 40 feet, it's not going to work very well. So the Rio Creek line on the Sage Dart's a great choice. And then on the, the Sage Foundation, a Rio Gold uh, is a great choice uh, for the Sage Foundation. So that's a wrap here uh, on my recommendations. Hopefully this is helpful. Again, there's links to purchase in the video uh, description. And then I'm going to do a run through and just show you real seats and components and colors uh, with macro. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. All right, we'll just start with the Sage R8. Uh, it's kind of a silver spruce color. There's the real seat. Somewhat of a titanium type color on that. But it's got some really cool cutouts. It's got a mayfly on it. You know, Sage's kind of robotic mayfly deal there. Um, but a real dark colored real seat on the trout models. Uh, the Sonic is a little bit more plain Jane. Um, just not quite as flashy. It's still got that mayfly on there. And uh, a much darker green more green than gray in comparison to the R8. So the, the green looks great. Black rod tube with the Sonic and uh, white with the R8. And then uh, I love the color of the, the tube. I know it sounds silly on the Trout LL, but it's just, this is such a pretty rod with those gold accents. Really classy, real slim down, you know, uh, you know, lock, lock ring there. And uh, just really nice gold accents and a really nice color to the Trout LL. Okay, the igniter here. Uh, nice looking real seat. It's got some really cool cutouts as well. It helps make it really light. Um, it's got the rod weight on there that happens to be a six that I have laid out there. And uh, yeah, it's got that nice, real rich maroon color to it. It is really pretty. Uh, the Sage Dart, kind of an olive color, gold, a few gold accents, um, pretty nice looking. And uh, that's the Dart, and the rod tube on this one's really skinny. It's a much smaller rod, doesn't have as big a guide, so that's one thing that's kind of cool on that Dart. Look how tiny that tube is, it's kind of nice. It's not real heavy, doesn't take up a lot of space. The Sage Foundation, again, it's just that quarter rod tube. And then uh, I'm just gonna prop it up like that. Just a real plain primer black uh, type blank. And then just a real plain Jane. It's a res very respectable rod. Um, the, you know, the money on this one definitely goes into the performance and the blank. So anyway, that's a look at all of the, the Sage Trout rods. I'll try to do another review maybe on some of the other specialty rods or the saltwater rods uh, later on.